My name is Connor Lydon. I work for Tetra Tech. Tetra Tech were appointed as the integrated consultant team by Northern Ireland Environment Agency to develop and implement the remedial strategy for the Maboy site. We have been asked to prepare an industry consultation pack as part of the Maboy remediation project. Today, I'm going to talk you through what that pack contains. Um, the aerial image you can see on the screen in front of you um, is orientated east-west with the eastern boundary of the site located along the topmost part of the image. The site is largely surrounded by agricultural land and the river farm to the west, which is along the bottom of the image. The purpose of this industry stakeholder engagement is to provide early technical engagement with industry stakeholders pre-remediation. Um, it's also an opportunity for industry stakeholders to put forward information that might assist the optimum remediation strategy. And NIE are seeking input from specialist industry contractors on emerging or novel remediation methods, technologies or techniques. The, the pack of information can be accessed on the Maboy Remediation Project website. Um, the link is provided in the uh, slide deck. We have a series of questions that we are posing to industry stakeholders. Um, there's seven questions in total. Um, I will talk you through those questions now. Uh, the first question is, can you provide any information on the success and challenges of using sustainable plant and equipment as part of earthworks or remediation projects? The second question we're asking is, can you put forward a method or combination of techniques that you consider would provide a solution for either part or all of the site remediation requirements? And can you provide examples of where similar techniques have been used at scale. Our third question is, can you provide examples of sustainable remediation solutions for sites contaminated with similar wastes and similar site context? This might include the use of innovative and emerging remedial techniques, landfilling, mining, um, or others. Question four, is can you provide any examples of how community concerns and perception have been successfully managed when carrying out similar remediation projects? Question five is, do you perceive, or what do you perceive are the greatest risks to a contractor delivering uh, this remediation project? What do you see as the main areas that the client can address pre-contract and within the contract to help mitigate or reduce or manage those risks. Question six is, are there any specific techniques or methods that you or that could be used to reduce the overall financial cost of the remediation? And can you provide examples of where such methods or techniques have been successfully adopted as part of a similar earthworks or remediation project? Question seven is given the specialist nature of the proposed remediation works, can you provide any examples uh, where learning and development opportunities for the community have been created? So those are the questions. I'm now going to talk you through uh, what we will do with that information. So the information will be used to inform the remedial options appraisal for the site. Uh, once that is complete, uh, the information will be used or some of the information will be used as part of the optimum remediation, remediation strategy development. And it will also inform the remediation contract structure and specification. The overall strategic objectives uh, for the project are the protection of the river fountain water quality, the protection of the NI water drinking water supply, uh, which is taken from the river fountain, 
and it is to improve groundwater quality overall. So TetraTech have been um, following the land contamination risk management process or the LCRM process. Um, we have been gathering further ground investigation information, developing a detailed quantitative risk assessment. Um, the outputs of those documents are now available as part of the pack of information uh, to industry stakeholders. And we are seeking your feedback uh, so that we can inform the remediation options appraisal as part of that LCRM process. Um, we expect that in the early part of 2023, we will be preparing the optimum remediation strategy for the site and integrating the scheme with the proposed A6 dueling road, uh, which cuts through uh, the outer perimeter of the site. In 2023, we expect to be developing the business case for the remediation contract, uh, carrying out uh, the necessary planning and seeking the necessary statutory approvals. So I'm now going to give you a little bit more information about the site, um, its location and the, the context. So the image on the left hand side you can see is the site location plan. Uh, the site occupies lands both east and west of the Maboy Road. The site is located approximately 1.5 kilometres east of Derry City and has a total site area of 46 hectares. The eastern portion, uh, or the lands in the eastern portion, um, contain approximately 13.6 uh, hectares, and the western portion contains 32. 5 hectares. The site is bound by the River Fawn to the west, and the Fawn is a designated uh, ASSI, SAC, and it also supports Atlantic salmon. There is a public water supply uh, from the River Fawn itself, located approximately 2.1 kilometres down gradient of the site. The site has been subject to unauthorised disposal of waste and the eastern portion of the site included an old regulated landfill and a material recycling facility, which are now closed. The western portion was also subject to extensive sand and gravel extraction. This slide outlines the information that is available at this moment in time. Um, there has been a total of 140 boreholes drilled on the site, and that's been supplemented by a further 125 trial pits. So it's not um, a small amount of investigation work that's been carried out. Um, we've also completed bathymetric surveys of the very large ponds that you can see in the top half of that image and also on the eastern portion of the site. Um, there has been a large quantity of leachate surface water and groundwater level and quality monitoring completed. Uh, there has been waste characterization um, samples collected. There have been soil samples uh, for analysis. Uh, there has been in situ permeability testing of boreholes. Um, there has been multiple topographical surveys carried out uh, from circa 2015 onwards. There has been a partial geophysical survey um, it's partial because when it was completed in 2015, it could not access certain uh, portions of the site, namely the areas that uh, were uh, containing large ponds um, and the geophysical survey couldn't access those areas. The surveys included conductivity mapping, 2D electrical resistivity, um, ERT, seismic refraction profiling uh, and multi-channel analysis of surface waves. There has been contemporary uh, flood risk modelling of the site using the most up-to-date information. Uh, there has been gas monitoring in the form of spot uh, monitoring. And there have been uh, various ecological and invasive species surveys carried out at the site. So hopefully that gives you a feel for the level of information that is available. Um, I'll go on now to talk you through uh, what has been done with that information or what the uh, the outworkings of that has been. 
So from a practical perspective, the ground investigation information and surveys have been used to inform the volume of waste on site. Um, so the waste volumes are estimated based on the ground investigation and geophysical survey data available. Uh, the total estimated waste volume is somewhere between 970,000 cubic metres uh, to 1.16 uh, million cubic metres. Uh, the breakdown of this is approximately a quarter of a million cubic metres of organic uh, metallic type wastes. Uh, we have in excess of half a million uh, mixed organic, uh, domestic and construction demolition type wastes and uh, a further 210,000 cubic metres of mainly construction and demolition wastes on the site. In addition to those volumes, um, for areas where the ground conditions were um, not inaccessible but difficult to access, uh, and where the geophysical survey couldn't uh, access uh, mainly uh, below the, the large water bodies or in around those areas. Um, we have uh, based the additional volume of 192,000 um, on the available exploratory logs for those areas. There is further information contained within section 2.4.1.6 of the industry consultation plan. There are other practical considerations on the site um, because of its proximity to the River Fawn. Uh, a large proportion of the site is subject to uh, fluvial flooding. Um, so that the extent of that flooding uh, can be seen on the, the image provided. As I mentioned a little earlier, uh, there have been extensive ecological surveys carried out of the site. Um, these have included, but not limited to, uh, the survey of uh, Japanese knotweed, Himalayan balsam, uh, giant hogweed. There are other constraints on the site uh, based on the ecological surveys, which include badger sets and uh, sp smooth newts. And there is further information um, on figure eight of the industry consultation pack. A lot of the information collected to date um, has been used to inform the updated controlled waters uh, detailed quantitative risk assessment for the site. Um, a copy of this DQRA uh, is available uh, as part of the industry pack. I'm going to talk you through now some of the findings of the DQRA and talk you through some of the outputs, uh, which will hopefully give you a better understanding of the site. So the first image I have here is figure six taken from the DQRA. Uh, it is the first round of groundwater monitoring completed in 2022. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, this particular image is orientated uh, from east to west, east being along the, the top half of the image. Uh, so this image shows the direction of groundwater flow uh, being from the east, uh, the top of the image, uh, to the west the, at the bottom of the image. There is further information then on a secondary round of groundwater monitoring uh, in 2022, uh, which shows the similar uh, groundwater flow direction uh, from the east to the west towards the River Farm. And this is based on groundwater level measurements uh, taken in boreholes across the site. This next image uh, shows the orientation and location of a series of conceptual site models uh, that we have developed for the site. These conceptual site models are effectively lines of section through uh, the, the site uh, along the sections that are shown on this image. So the first uh, conceptual site model I'm going to talk to you about is the, the southernmost one shown on this image. And that CSM is depicted here. Um, so you can see that as we move from the east of the image, which is on the right hand side, uh, you have your site boundary um, being, uh, well, you have a, a tributary to the River Fawn along that eastern boundary. Uh, you have a, a dotted or dashed line uh, shown along that eastern boundary, which depicts 
uh, the location and orientation of the proposed A6 road, the Dueling Road. Uh, in this area, we have uh, mixed wastes uh, close to the perimeter, close to that river uh, tributary, um, and that's underlain by peat deposits and sandy gravel. Um, as you move then towards the west, you have uh, a large lagoon within uh, the southern portion of the um, eastern camp. And you traverse the Maboy Road then into largely construction and demolition wastes. And you can see from the image that that, uh, that waste uh, ranges in thickness uh, between sort of three and five metres uh, across that uh, that portion. Um, you then have uh, a series of other tributaries which ultimately flow towards the River Fawn. And again, these images are available um, as figure eight of the DQRA. The second conceptual site model, um, which is shown on the screen, uh, is taken through um, a line of section that's a little bit further north from the first, and it cuts through the old licensed landfill portion of the site, uh, which is on the eastern side, and uh, traverses the Maboy Road again, uh, and uh, the western most part of this conceptual site model uh, terminates uh, just the far side of the River Fawn. So this image shows how uh, the site is underlain again by sandy gravel. Um, you then have uh, the closed licensed landfill, um, which is shown on the right hand side uh, above that. And on top of that closed licensed landfill, you have domestic waste. Uh, that domestic waste extends um, across uh, and close to the Maboy Road. And you can see at the centre of the image, then you have tarry waste. Um, which is the darker um, irregular shape um, at the center of the image. Surrounding that uh, irregular dark uh, tarry waste is uh, heavily impacted tarry waste soils or waste materials. Um, and then as you traverse from that tarry waste, uh, you can see a dissolved phase plume um, of contaminants coming off that tarry waste. Um, that traverses through the sand and gravel that underlies the site. And you have igneous rocks um, at depth. So you have uh, samite and semi-pelitic semi schists um, lying below that. Um, as you get closer to the River Fawn, you have more mixed waste and construction demolition wastes. This third conceptual site model um, is located again north of the first, um, and there is a, a small aerial imagery there just to give you um, confirmation of where that line of section is. And again, similar to uh, conceptual site model two that we looked at, um, this line of section cuts through that tarry waste in a slightly different angle. So again, you're seeing domestic wastes on top of sand and gravel, and you're seeing the tarry waste and the tarry waste impacted soils, um, along with uh, some mixed wastes and construction and demolition wastes, all overlying predominantly sand and gravel. But in some areas, uh, you have more organic um, or alluvial deposits closer to the river farm. The water table is also depicted on all of these uh, conceptual site models. And as per the groundwater flow maps that I showed earlier, uh, the orientation is from east to west towards the River Fawn. So these conceptual site models hopefully give you a feel for how the wastes on the site interact uh, with the groundwater regime um, and also how contaminants might move uh, away from where they have been deposited. Um, the conceptual site models are further supported by a series of geological cross sections, which I'll show you now. Those geological cross sections are available at Appendix 14 of the DQRA, uh, which is provided as part of the pack. And I will not go through each of them now, but I'll 
um, just show you on the screen um, a copy of, of them. And the orientation of all of these geological sections um, is shown at Appendix 14 of the DQRA. The next thing I'm going to talk to you about is the, the modelling uh, completed as part of the DQRA. So I have a brief summary here just to provide you um, some context as to uh, what modelling has been completed. Um, so the DQRA uh, contained a CONSIM model and that model was used to determine attenuation factors for groundwater. Um, uh, so it's considered a level three assessment. Uh, the remedial targets methodology worksheets were also used to determine soil and leachate remedial targets. Um, so those represent a level two and a level one assessment. And we also completed a water mass balance modeling exercise um, to check the overall assumptions made in CONSIM and also to derive site specific assessment criteria which account for dilution in the river form. So effectively the water bass balance modeling was or constituted a level four assessment. Before uh, we look at some of the, the modeling results it's important to, to know that the site has been zoned um, so we have zoned the site based on the waste and leachate characteristics observed in each area of the site. Um, so this um, zone, zoning plan is available as figure 9A in the DQRA, and you'll be able to see in more detail um, what part of each site is or how it has been zoned. So this is a, a brief overview of the findings of the DQRA. So potential contaminants of concern uh, consistent with previous phases of assessment um, have been identified. Uh, those main potential contaminants of concern are iron, manganese, uh, some of which can be naturally occurring, uh, and lower concentrations of nickel, zinc, copper, lead, and cadmium. And uh, there was also ammonia um, observed site-wide. Uh, we also observed organic pollutants such as benzene, naphthalene, uh, and these were predominantly identified in zones three and eight and are believed to be associated with the historical uh, tarry waste deposition. Um, it's understood that that tarry waste was deposited in the 1970s. CONSIM predicts um, a moderate risk from, from the PAH species, so that's the polyaromatic hydrocarbon species. Um, and it also predicts aromatic hydrocarbons and BTEX compounds in source areas 3, 8 and 5, chiefly uh, benzene and naphthalene. Ammonia, cadmium, zinc, nickel and free cyanide are uh, considered moderate risks owing to the limited dilution potential in groundwater and the short travel times to the River Fawn. And CONSIM predicts that uh, these potential contaminants of concern are reaching the river um, at concentrations greater than the environmental quality standards for, for their respective compounds. However, we have observed significant dilution in the river itself, uh, which means that it's unlikely that those uh, potential contaminants of concern will have a measurable impact on the river itself. So considering the data collected as part of the ground investigation, uh, the groundwater and surface water quality monitoring and the updated conceptual site models, um, it is expected that there is a hydraulic connection between uh, groundwater at the site and the river Fawn. Um, but the modeling has demonstrated that the river Fawn water quality, uh, well, the monitoring or the modeling and the water quality monitoring have demonstrated that the river fawn um, or the impact on the river fawn is low uh, due to that dilution potential or that dilution effect. Um, the modeling shows that it's very unlikely uh, that the level of impact will be sufficient to compromise the quality of the river fawn or the drinking uh, water abstraction 
at clock hole, um, even during drought conditions. And the DQRA provide a strong basis for the subsequent remedial options appraisal and the optimum remediation strategy development. This is a graphical representation of the model findings. Um, so you can see that uh, the model has uh, considered different source areas, uh, each of which fall into the different zones that we uh, just talked about. Um, so the CONSIM modeling shows that the pollutants of concern will migrate to the riverbank within a relatively short time scale and exceed the CONSIM derived um, uh, targets. Uh, resulting in a moderate risk rating. And when dilution in the river is accounted for, uh, the contaminants uh, do not impact the river. Uh, there's been no high risks identified as part of the modelling. And the water mass balance modelling assumes that there is less dilution available um, because we have reduced the average flow in the river by a factor of 10. Um, and the assessment is therefore uh, conservative. And this image is available as figure uh, 9B as part of the DQRA. So hopefully um, that short presentation has given you a good overview um, of the information available and the site context. Um, the pack of information uh, was issued on the 28th of October. Um, and if you haven't already done so, you can download all of the available documents at the web link on slide four of this presentation. And also, um, it's expected that um, the industry stakeholder review period will end on the 5th of December. Um, and at that date, we're hoping that you can provide written feedback to the questions that we've provided today. Um, in December, we're expecting to be uh, compiling and interrogating that industry feedback. And in January, we will be incorporating the feedback into the remedial options appraisal. So I'll leave you now with those questions again. Um, and if you have any queries or would like to provide feedback, please do email um, the NIEA at the email address provided. So that is maboy.project at DERA. D A E R A um, dash N I dot gov dot UK.